Tonight, the man who supplied some weapons used in the San Bernardino terror attack is being held on federal criminal charges. And court papers filed today. Well, they tell a frightening story of plotting and planning terror attacks years before the San Bernardino killings. KKL 9's Dave Bryan joins us now with some of the revelations found in the FBI's criminal complaint against Enrique Marquez. That complaint shows a window, the feds say, into an accomplice, somebody who, wittingly or not, uh, was connected with, with the San Bernardino attack. He was not one of the shooters in that bloody attack at the Inland Regional Center, but Enrique Marquez told the FBI that as far back as four years ago, he and Syed Farouk, who was one of the terrorist killers, were making detailed plans for killing people at the college they both attended using weapons Enrique bought because of his appearance. 24-year-old Enrique Marquez entered the federal courthouse in this unmarked car, charged with conspiring to provide material support to terrorists and having bought two assault rifles that were used in the San Bernardino attack under false pretenses. The 36-page criminal complaint quotes Marquez as saying he had no knowledge about the attack on the Inland Regional Center two weeks ago where 14 people were shot dead at a holiday party. But Marquez told the FBI that in 2011 and 2012, he bought the rifles that were later used in the attack because his appearance was Caucasian while gunman Syed Farouk looked Middle Eastern. And he acknowledged he purchased the smokeless powder used in the pipe bombs that were found at the shooting scene. In the afternoon, Marquez was asked by a federal judge if he had read the charges against him outlined in the criminal complaint, and he said yes. In addition to the charge of conspiring to provide material support to terrorists, he's also accused of making false statements with the acquisition of firearms and with immigration fraud. The court documents outline a chilling tale of Marquez and Farouk plotting and planning a violent attack in 2011. At Riverside Community College, Marquez told the FBI they planned to start the attack by throwing pipe bombs into the cafeteria area from an elevated position on the second floor and then conduct a follow-on attack at another location. A rush hour attack on the 91 freeway in an area where the lack of exits would leave motorists trapped. Farouk would start the attack by throwing pipe bombs into the busy freeway, he told the FBI. The exploding bombs would disable and stop traffic. Farouk, he said, planned to shoot into the stopped vehicles, shooting his rifle into them and killing people. His priority was to shoot law enforcement personnel before shooting life-saving personnel. The attacks never happened, Marquez told the investigators, because he and Farouk decided to abort the planned attacks after another terrorist cell was broken up and arrested in the Inland Empire. Counterterrorism expert Brian Levin, a criminal justice professor at Cal State San Bernardino, told me under conspiracy laws, the attack doesn't have to be carried out to get a conviction. Under federal law, a conspiracy charge requires two or more people agree to commit a crime and then take what's called an overt or identifiable step towards the commission of the crime. You don't have to follow through on it. The mere agreement, plan, and identifiable step is enough to get a conspiracy charge. The day after the San Bernardino attack two weeks ago, Marquez told investigators he frantically called 911 and told them, my neighbor, he did the San Bernardino shooting. The response was, your neighbor did what? Marquez replied, he was the shooter. The expletive, expletive used my gun in the shooting. They can trace all the guns back to me. Later that day, Marquez, apparently drunk, entered the emergency room at Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance, more than 60 miles from his home, and was placed in the psychiatric ward and held involuntarily. Professor Levin says the criminal complaint is a window into how terrorists who are inspired but not directed by a major terrorism group often operate. What extremists do, and I testified before Congress about this, is they'll go on the web and dine from a buffet of extremist organizations, maybe at the same time or maybe over a timeline. So that was something that I think confirmed what a lot of us counterterrorism analysts already know, is that when extremists are inspired, they're not necessarily going to be under the thumb of any one terrorist organization.
Now, tonight, Marquez is being held without bail on the three federal charges. If convicted on all counts, he could be facing up to 35 years in prison. He's scheduled for a bail hearing Monday, and arraignment is now set for January 6th when he's expected to enter a plea at that time. Jeff, Lena? Now, Dave, this complaint had a lot of information, a lot of new information. So, yeah. what does this mean for the feds going forward and how they tackle terrorism? Well, it means they're going to have some tough sledding because, as the professor just said, a lot of these terrorists are very small, homegrown groups, two or three people, not working necessarily in conjunction with any known uh, terrorist organization. So, it means the law enforcement is going to have to figure out more ways to find these people, and that could raise questions about privacy rights versus security. Rights. It's uh, it's not a good situation. It just got tougher. It seems like I, I just got a lot tougher. No question yeah. about it. A lot of the old ways aren't necessarily going to work now. Okay, Dave. Thank you so much for that report. We appreciate.